Greetings, everyone. P. Pardo here from Sea of Tranquility. Welcome to another episode of The Monster's Den. It's our Christmas episode, right? Holiday season is upon us. Christmas in just a few days. What better way to celebrate the holidays than with the Monster's Den crew ranking the Silent Night, Deadly Night franchise? Woohoo! <laughs> Dan Brown's in the house. Chris Allo's in the house. Craig Kaminsky's here. Jamie Laszlo. And it's five o'clock in the morning in Scotland, but Dave oh. Gallagher is here anyway. What's up, Guru? How you doing? Going on. Going on, everybody. We're all looking festive. This is great. This is ho, ho, ho. All Let's we need go. is some eggnog. Oops, no eggnog tonight. Nice. Oh, well. One of these days, we really should all drink on one of these shows and just get completely hammered. Wouldn't that be fun? No, I become an ugly human being. I can't yeah. do it. <laughs> I think so. Tape on a Friday, Saturday night. Yeah, one of these That'd days. We'll, fun. We'll, 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 oh, right. how to do we'll do our own Madison. We'll do some out of copyright stuff and just fucking get blitzed. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Silent Night, Deadly Night. So, this is our last uh, film series uh, ranking of the year in 2023. And uh, we have all <laughs> revisited all six films. So, we got the first five. And then the uh, reimagining of the first one, which came out in 2012, I believe it was. And uh, personally, I only ever saw the first two. So this was really interesting for me to visit the all the other ones for the very, very first time. And I walked away with some very different opinions than what I thought I would have originally. So, uh, you know, in the essence of time, we got a lot of films here, a lot of a lot of people on the panel. So we're not going to give tons and tons of information about the movies, but we're going to rank them as we like them, as we revisit them. And uh, we're going to start off with Mr. Davey. Uh, and we're going to go three at a time. So at least we'll be kind of move through the ranking a little bit quicker. So Davey's going to start us off with number six, five and four. And uh, I'll turn it over to Davey. Oh, okay, okay. Um, So um, I've got these all on Blu-ray. Um, so I've seen them before. Um, 101 Films put a lovely set of the first two, big deluxe box sets. And then last year, Vestron did a set which put three, four, and five together, which is loaded with extras. And then I picked up the uh, the remake. Well, another film recently. Um, it's not really a remake at all. Um, but my, my bottom one, by a mile actually, is Silent Night, Deadly Night 4, Initiation. Um, despite the presence of Octopus yourself, Maud Adams. Um, it's it, I've got to put it down there because it's just not a Silent Night Deadly Night film. It's nothing to do with Christmas whatsoever. Um, so it just lets the franchise down by by um, definition, really. It's nothing to do with Christmas. There's a couple of scenes where we see a family at a tree, but apart from that, it all looks as if it's the middle of summer. It's quite ridiculous, actually, to call it Silent Night Deadly Night. And on top of that, it's just not a very interesting film. Um, if it was, I might bump it up a couple of places, but it's just a very generic um, kind of uh, proto-feminist um, Wiccan witches thing. Um, there's an old crone in it, which is quite fun, but apart from that, it's just, there's not much to recommend. Uh, Clint Howard's Clint Howard, so, you know, weirdo. Um, but, yeah, there's just not much to recommend about uh, about number four which is unfortunate because it's directed by brian usner um and i love brian usner from uh, society and the reanimator sequels um but yeah i'm putting that down there um sec fifth then i'm going to put the reimagining i think because the rest of them are from that period 80s very early 90s they all have a similar look and then when you watch this it looks so cold and sterile and flat it just doesn't seem it doesn't seem connected at all, which is fine in its own way, but it, it just seems detached. There's no sense of fun to it. It's it's CSI silent night, really. Um it just stands out a mile. Um Malcolm McDowell's accent, it's like halfway through, someone reminded him he's supposed to be an American in it, because he's English for half the movie, he's American for the other half of the movie. <laughs> No idea what's going on there. Um, but, you know, Donald Logue's quite fun. It's interesting this is the first one that really does a whodunit. You know, six films in, and it's yeah. the first time they've actually bothered to do that part of it, rather than a, it's it's one of the family you've already met or, or this new mob. Um, but, yeah, um, and Jamie King's quite good in the lead. I think she's actually very good. Um, but it's it's just a quite generic, really. There's, not, there's nothing... 
There's nothing particularly fun or memorable about it. It pays homage to the to the original couple of movies in a few ways with the kills, you know, getting lifted onto the the deer and whatnot, and a few few lines. But um, yeah, it's it's not great. Um, seconds from the bottom then would be hmm, is it that one or that one. I'm gonna go with I'm gonna go with number five, the toy maker. Um. I was interested um, on on knowing before this came out, knowing that Mickey Rooney protested the first one so heavily. He was the face of the Hollywood uh, uh, demonstrations against this film. Would he uh, would it reference it in the special features? And indeed, they do. They talk about it that they cast Mickey Rooney almost as a fuck you to Mickey Rooney, so they can mock him for taking the taking the money after saying that this franchise is the most disgusting thing ever and they've ruined the sanctity of Christmas. Can they can they get him to to take the the king's shilling as it were? And he does. Um, and it, it it can't exactly plead that. Oh well, my part wasn't wasn't sleazy and pervert. He plays a horrible part, Mister Petto. It was horrible. Um, the film's quite fun though. Um, as a sinister toy maker. Um, and his strange son. There's there's quite a fun revelation towards the end. There's some fun body horror stuff in it. There's a great costume design for the end, which I won't spoil, but that's a funny scene. Um, the kid's quite annoying. Um, it's, it's not great. Mickey Rooney had some issues around this point, um, so I, I don't think it was a big performance, to put it bluntly, um, but it brings, it brings what he can at this point in his life and career. Um and yeah, I don't think it's I don't think it's the worst thing in the world. Um it's directed by Martin Curtiser, who I don't think went on to direct anything else whatsoever, but Brian Usina still did the script and it does have still that element, that Brian Usina kind of dark comedy element that we expect from him. But yeah, so that, I think that would be my my six five four. I think we're going to be all quite different in our rankings here. Oh yeah, I thought we all had number two as our bottom, and it's not even in his bottom three. Yeah. No. <laughs> You'll be waiting a while. <laughs> all right, Craig. All right, when we got this assignment, I thought, wow, geez, this was, uh, to, to quote Chris, oof. You know, I was uh, I I was kind of nervous about this, you know, because the, the same first, thing. One, <laughs> the first one was actually the only one that I've, I've seen previously. But in all honesty, I found these movies uh, were this series easier to get through than the phantasm series or for at least me for the underworld series so uh <laughs> these these were not as not as bad as i thought so starting right away my bottom for me easily part three better watch out i thought that was just totally shitty uh bill mosley's wandering around with a bob the builder see-through hard hat with his brain uh showing uh somehow gets uh, picked up as a hitchhiker with uh, the brain bowl hospital gown and barefoot but yet he still got that ride uh robert culp is just slumming it there's some nudity in it which you know that that gave me a little bit of a, a little bit of a uh positive to it the the main girl was uh was from mulholland drive so it's i i, I recognized her from from that but uh they Laura just pretty, yeah they just pretty much they they milked the cow pretty dry i thought with the uh you know the whole ricky and billy thing you know that cow was dead i thought by the end of part two but yet they do it on part three and so i was kind of glad that they got rid of that theme uh you know moving forward so yeah part three was was easily my least favorite uh next up my number five i went with part five the toy maker um again mickey rooney just kind of slumming it in this and uh uh maybe he was going through that elder abuse or something at the time and he didn't know what he was doing when he signed uh to you know to do this movie i don't know but the uh uh you know just this, i mean the way it starts off i mean the kid the kid's dad is killed with a toy ball but yet he kept the toy you know and it's like uh, it's still in the house you know so i mean i thought that was uh you know kind of stupid but kim from part four turns up in this and and the kid who survived in part four Lonnie who, who dresses like vanilla ice the whole movie uh you know he he makes a return in it playing the same characters um but there I mean with the there was a there was a few 
decent parts where I got a good chuckle, like L Larry the Larva kills the kills the one guy or it comes through his eye while he's driving. I thought that was that was good, but it was just a whole convoluted thing about who's his, who's the baby's who's the kid's daddy and the the ones the scene of teenage lust. I did like that though in in uh, in part five with the where it was like. I, this girl does not look like she's 18 and it's like are they going to show some skin and no they 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 don't or anything but uh and the, and and at the very end where he's you know uh, was it pino is trying to bang the chick with no dick you know so i i don't i i found that yeah particularly amusing but it's still stuck at my at my part uh at my part five is my number five. My number four, I went with the reboot from 2012. Um, they definitely amped up the gore to 2012 levels, but um, the movie itself, uh, Chris and I were discussing this over this past weekend, how it's just kind of a mess uh, in parts where if, where if you just take a step back and try to think about things with aspects with the the parade and the mayor and, and uh, just, just some of the plot yeah it is a whodunit of sorts but they kind of just it's almost like they forgot to do that and then at the very end of the movie it's like oh yeah by the way this is who the the, the killer was this guy and and uh, oh oops we oh yeah we, uh, we already mentioned that the main character's dad was a, was a sheriff previously so we'll quick just tie that part back in it, it was that just didn't work for me but uh the brunette porn girl that's in this was in zombievers so and she's naked in that too so uh she and that was made two years after this movie so she and she had a lot more speaking lines in that so she she moved up in the world after uh getting thrown into the chipper shredder uh at a christmas tree lot that somehow had no one at it before christmas <laughs> so but anyway but and that was that one was that was good enough though to be at my to be at my number three i mean it 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 uh, Jamie King was okay in it, and it was kind of, they they uglied her up a little bit, but you could still uh, tell that she was kind of hot. And I thought it was funny too that uh, Malcolm McDowell kind of like just said uh, screw it with his with his accent, or or he just let it come and go, uh, kind of pulling a, a Kevin Costner or or whatever, just just didn't really uh, care during the movie. But anyway, reboot was my number uh, four. Chris. Uh, all right, my uh, my number six uh, was Silent Night, Deadly Night Four, The Initiation. Um, I this was a first time watch for me. Uh, I thought it was a great cast, uh, great special effects, uh, great director. But man, uh, all in all, a, a shitter of a movie. I agree with Davey. This had nothing to do with the rest of the series, and like nothing to do with Christmas. You know, there was a bunch of old lesbian witches that we're putting some spell on some broad who's got like a shitty boyfriend and i'm like i just don't fucking care i thought it just sucked uh my number five was uh silent night deadly night part three better watch out um i thought it really sucked that they replaced the ricky from part two who had the awesome eyebrows and would not keep moving his eyebrows the entire fucking movie they replaced him who was like fun with bill mosley who's like catatonic the whole fucking movie and yeah craig said he had like a hard hat on to me it looked like my wife's spaghetti strainer that she uses you know and he's fucking walking around and i just i, I just didn't give a fuck about it about any of the people in there uh i just i just thought it sucked again first time watch for me um, number four, I thought it was slightly better than the other two, uh, Silent Night, Deadly Night 5, The Toy Maker. Uh, I, it made me laugh uh, because in the 80s, my parents used to take me to one of these all-inclusive resorts in Pennsylvania, and it was the Mickey Rooney Hotel. So they had like literally a King Kong, King Kong sized Mickey Rooney on the outside of the hotel. And like inside was all pictures of him with famous people. And we went for like years. So that's my, you know, my Mickey Rooney connection. And I, I guess I probably forgot, like Davey mentioned, that he was he was anti uh, Silent Night, Deadly Night 1. So, yeah, even funnier that they brought him back for this. 
but man, you know, I like the thing that's one of the, one of the many things that pissed me off. I'm like, okay, so they have Clint Howard in this movie playing a weirdo in four and five, but his character name is Ricky. I'm like, seriously, guys, all the <laughs> fucking names in the world. And you had to pick the, the character name from the first three movies. Like there was no other name you could have used, but a- apparently it's not supposed to be the same Ricky, no, but who, who the fuck knows? So, um, but yeah, I didn't, um, I didn't particularly like that one. Although I, I did laugh that like, he, you know, there's like a, he builds, he builds like a Terminator. And like Craig said, he, he's like a Ken doll. He's got no schlong, but he's trying to bang the broad. And yeah, a, a lot, a lot of stuff too. Like, like Craig said, the fucking doll. I'm, I'm like, wait, so yeah, the toy kills the husband, but there's, there's no explanation as to how the husband dies. And yeah, so that was kind of a shit or two. Uh, so that's my, uh, my, my uh, six, five and four. <laughs> Doesn't the husband just fall into a, a, a fire poker thing? Does he? I, the, yeah, like, the th- I remember the the thing goes around his face, ball, like strangles him, or yeah, something. the ball strangles him, and then he trips, and his yes. face goes right into a poker right through his head. All right, Davey paid way more attention than I did. Yeah. I was I was looking at my through through all three of these. I was looking at my my uh, my watch the clock on my phone a lot. Like holy fuck! And that was five doing? minutes in, so yeah, you can tell how good that one was. Hmm. The the Mickey Rooney Hotel is in Downingtown, Pennsylvania, which is actually not that far not that far the, from where I live. Does it's it still, so it still exists? Uh, it's called the Downing. It's it's now called the it's the Downingtown Country Club. We're gonna say the Robert uh, Downey Jr. Hotel. Wow! Yeah, yeah we used to go there in the eighties. Passed from celebrity to celebrity. But yeah, after building the Downing Downingtown Motor Inn, the owner enlisted Mickey Rooney to help attract visitors and his entertainment friends to the resort. Yeah, that was it. Doesn't doesn't Stephen Keeler have that? That like forty foot Mickey Rooney in his backyard with the other uh, things he has, <laughs> probably. <laughs> An inflatable. We it's not a inflatable should. Mickey Rooney. <laughs> it's oh, not sure. That's right. I put him on the back roof of the warehouse, like a King Kong thing, maybe. I don't yeah. know. Cheeseburger. The Mickey Rooney statue has no deck as well, just like Pino. <laughs> <laughs> and it's five foot two. Yeah, but only Pino, Mickey got around. He was quite the. Uh, he was quite the player. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> Married like eight that, times. That little bastard. That's right. That's right. Like, you know, all right, Dan. Oxymoron, yeah. Mickey, Mickey Rooney giant statue. That's like an that's like Attack of the Fifty Foot Midget. It makes no sense. Yeah. <laughs> Just, does it work? Eh. What do you got, Dan, for six, five, and four? Well, unlike all of you uh, learned gentlemen who have watched one, two, or how many of these, I had never seen any of these. Really? Wow. wow. This was all wow. new territory. For some reason, it kind of came and went. I didn't pay attention to it, and then I. I think I'd hear there's a number two, there's a number three. Had my per, you know, had my curiosity, but you know, but it's kind of refreshing because since I was able to sit through six Twilight films, I could at least sit through six Silent Night, Deadly Night movies. Uh, so that being said, um, none of them really like wowed me, but I'm gonna have to go. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me, with my number six pick is gonna be number three. Um, the fact of, yeah, the fact of Bill Mosley, I mean, bringing that, his character of Chop Top to a whole new level, uh, and then also wearing this, like, really bad cosplay, uh, what's it called, Mars Attacks headpiece. <laughs> I was full of, you know, but nobody notices, whatever, I didn't care about the people. Uh, yes, it did tie into the original one, and Ricky has also gone from looking like a uh, Jimmy uh, Jimmy Fallon's older, you know, like prison, got out of prison brother uh, in, in number two. Number three comes back as Bill Mosley, so this makes no sense whatsoever, supposed to be Ricky. But yeah, I had no love for it whatsoever. I'm glad everybody died, uh, and I think Ricky survived. And it's true, I had to actually, I, I, I cared so little about this film that I was re- going through the notes of all the shit I had to do tonight. And I came up with this situation. Like I had no, I could not remember what happened in number three. Couldn't remember what the movie was about. I said four was about like yeah, right, the lesbian society level with the Brian Yuzza thing. And this was that three. I went, what the fuck happened to number three? I just saw it three days ago. Am I that, am I that senile? <laughs> but anyhow, no, it's just, I really didn't give a shit. So that's, that's my number six. Um, number five. I'm going to have to go with number five, which is, you know, um, yeah, the, the Geppetto, Joe Petto, as we said, you know, and uh, 
Pinot Grigio or Pinot Noir or whatever it was. I guess the Pinot Noir is for the black exploitation version. But anyhow, the you know, the situation is that it, you know, it's kind of hackneyed. I mean, you can see that I, I guarantee Mickey Rooney was drinking the jack out of the bottle. It was not, it was not iced tea. Um, you know, is just and like, yeah, mommy, I want to be close to you, mommy. Well, I'm sorry, you're G.I. Joe or Ken, it ain't gonna work. So go away. The um, that's why that's there. So it was OK. It made no sense. You know, guys killing people because he lost his house and the kid. And, and who cares? Um, next one is going to be number four. And the only reason I put number four in there is because it just reeks. It's it's Brian Yuzno throughout the whole thing. Anything with gooey body fluids to some kind of weird uh, skin connecting to each other to some kind of perverse sex it's in there you know i to the point where it's like okay i've seen this before and yes it was it's brian using his work uh storyline however was and that's why i gave it in, in the middle because it was brian using his trademark stuff but the story itself i'm with, with with chris it's like okay whatever you know this guy's girl's trying to replace her woman's trying to replace her daughter that died and they got to get this and they go through this whole ritual of course you know, Clint Howard taking a rip off of Rosemary's baby, but instead of Satan, you've got, you know, the sidekick of gentle Ben over you, you know, 30 years older, looking much more creepier. Uh, you know, it's just weird. So that's why it's in the middle. Uh, no, nothing, no great shakes. No, uh, my my world was not moved. I'm good. So can't wait to get on the next three. Thanks. <laughs> Jamie. I am so confused. You guys got me doing my Columbo pose when he's thinking and he's confused. <laughs> How is number two not last on everybody's list? It's a 30-minute movie. Stuff to make into an 88-minute movie. Because those eyebrows, it's... Jamie, those eyebrows make it. Oh, my God. Who a cares good about 30-minute movie is better than a bad 90-minute minute movie. First of all, none of these movies are good. So no. when I say something is decent or good, I'm dropping the bar way down low. It's not good where it normally is. This is now good. So it's on a curve. It's on a Silent Night, Deadly Night curve. Um, yeah, Silent Night, Deadly Night 2 is my uh, least favorite. It has two, two screenwriters. One to ask, what, what, what do you think should happen next? And the second one to go, just throw in another flashback. <laughs> it's a 30-minute movie, stretched out to 88 minutes. Uh, Ricky is played by this Eric Freeman guy, the worst actor I've ever seen in any slasher movie any time, anywhere. Um, the character remembers everything from part one, even though he was a newborn baby. Because in his, <laughs> as, as he says, because I was, I was there. there. <laughs> okay, well, let's sum that up. <laughs> that just was a brush stroke over that. Um, the movie theater scene is so wonderfully stupid. First of all, it's the smallest movie theater I've ever seen in my life. And the, the old boyfriend is there. And his name is Chip. <laughs> so cliche, Chip. I swear to God, if there was a Martian in this movie, the Martian's name would be Zoltar. That's how much they were thinking on names in this movie. And then he's getting killed a couple rows behind everyone with his feet up in the air, but no one's noticing. <laughs> it's a great scene because of how stupid it is. Uh, the dude gets killed, um, but the, the, the chick gets killed, I, I mean. The dude kills his girlfriend. And I notice she literally says the word gulp like she's reading it from a page. <laughs> she pronounces the word gulp. So, uh, yeah, it, it's it's it, it, you know what? And there is a scene where a car flips and comes within a few feet of Ricky. And I'm thinking that is way too dangerous of a stunt to be done on a movie this stupid. It's not worth the risk at all. So, yes, number two should be everybody's bottom list. I, I can't wait to see what positive things you guys have to say about that. I'm on the edge of my seat. Uh, Silent Night, Deadly Night 3 from 89 is pretty stupid. Screenplay by Carl Carlos Laszlo. I don't know the dude. He's not in my family, so don't blame me and my family for this uh, screenplay. <laughs> but this is so bad, it's good kind of movie. Uh, like you guys said, Ricky's walking around with that brain cap on. And he's hitchhiking, and the guy goes, literally, when he pulls him over, he's some boxer in real life. Pete, you might know him. Um, he literally says, Merry Christmas, buddy. Hop in. 
<laughs> with the brain cap and the gown and his ass hanging out. And then he goes to grandma's house and he's got the cap over the big metal thing and part of the metal showing. And grandma's like, sure, come on in. We'll give you some turkey soup. So stupid. I actually had a lot of fun watching. I might have had the most fun watching this one, but it's terrible. Um, the kids show up and grandma's dead while she's missing. But here's the thing. They don't take it too seriously, even though there's food boiling all over the stove. Oh, she's probably just ran down the street or something or went to the neighbors. with Stuff boiling all over the stove? Uh, this is when it gets creepy. This chick, Laura, changes shirts in front of her brother. And he's just watching her. And then it gets weirder because he starts helping her button her shirt up. <laughs> and it, does anyone remember It's So Wrong on Howard Stern? It was a little game show that it reminded me of. Google it. I'm not going to talk about it, but Google that. Um, but here's my favorite part of the whole franchise. The dude saves his sister from uh, Ricky. Really? This is Ricky, not Billy. Yeah, Ricky. And um, at the end, his sister that he has the hots for. And he walks in with a gun and he goes, hey, bobblehead, is it live or is it Memorex? I'm like, what does what does that line have to do with anything? They're just trying to be like hip. We know this is like a trendy commercial right now. So just throw it in. So then I started imagining like outtakes where they tried other lines from the day. And I was sitting there cracking myself up in silence, just thinking, imagining him walking in going, hey, bobblehead, where's the beef? <laughs> no, that didn't work. Cut. Hey, bobblehead, my baloney has a first name. <laughs> And then the best one that I really had myself on the floor sitting there. Hey, bobblehead. I'm stuck on band-aids because band-aids are stuck on me. <laughs> it was probably, it was probably and I, just, I, I just went on and on in my head. I'm sure it was these, product oh, I wish it was on the outtakes, the bonus. Yeah, it was material probably product placement because I'm because I'm just thinking of it's like have a coke and a smile. You know, yes. you know. Yeah, have a coke and you I could do that. Oh, it's like a Saturday Night Live bit if this no, movie was more well known. Um 30, you know, Robert, Roger, uh, what's his name? Robert Culp. He tries to add a little class to it. Doesn't work. Uh, then I'm going to go with Sil uh, Silent Night, Deadly Night 4. Uh, the UK title was Bugs, I read, which makes more sense. It Yes, it, it does not seem like a Silent Night, Deadly Night film. But, I mean, you know, Reggie's, Reggie, Reggie Bannister is in it. And when I saw him, oh, yeah, I was like, oh Reggie, I think I kind of miss him from the Phantasm movies. Reggie, how you been? He's not in it long, though. No. Uh, Clint Howard... <laughs> You know, as the, uh, you know, doing Silent Night, Deadly Night 4, I was imagining the 1990 uh, Thanksgiving table at the Howard House. Yeah, I'm directing a Backdraft with Kurt Russell and uh, Robert De Niro. Hey, Clint, what are you doing? I'm in Silent Night, Deadly Night 4. <laughs> but, you know, he's on the extras and he's really proud of that movie. And he takes it, you know, with good, good uh, grace. Uh, Maud Adams Octopussy. She, it's not, there's no guy in that Santa suit, but the, there are some scenes that are well done when Clint Howard comes in to the uh, to the redhead's house, who's pretty hot and naked a lot. Um, I thought that whole fight scene was well done. And then when the redhead's friend, you find out that she's in on the whole thing. Okay, remember the bars down here. That's not bad. There's a scene where they kidnap the kid and uh, Clint Howard runs into the van while it's moving. I'm like, that little scene wasn't too bad. So, and, and the bugs, I thought were well done. He really, this guy is screaming, Matt George went all in on the effects. So it's kind of like a David Cronenberg film if he directed Rosemary's Baby. None of it really makes sense. You just kind of go with the flow. And But yeah, I didn't think it's terrible. All right, my number six is Silent Night, Deadly Night 3, Better Watch Out. For me, easily the worst, and I think the only film that I didn't enjoy on any level. Uh, I found it boring. I, You know, picking Bill Mosley to play Ricky after you had that other dude in the second film just made absolutely no sense to me whatsoever. A, he doesn't look like him. He's not as big or tall as him. He doesn't, it's just nothing about him is, is even remotely similar. 
And to me, it's like watching Bill Mosley as this is almost as disappointing as anybody who played the Frankenstein monster after Boris, Kar Boris Karloff, right? It's just like, just absolutely no enthusiasm in the role or whatever. Uh, you know, he has little to do throughout the whole movie, except towards the end where he kind of wakes up and goes on a little bit of a rampage. But, um, but yeah, I just, um, I don't care about any of the characters whatsoever. Uh, I don't, I think the violence fa uh, factor was a little toned down from the first two films as well. And I just, it's not fun for me. It's not violent enough and it's not fun. And uh, I don't like the casting. I don't care about the characters. So for me, this one was easily the worst. Everything from here on in, I enjoyed. Uh, my number five, I went back and forth with like four and five. And I ultimately went with Silent Night uh, from 2012, The Reimagining, which I think is pretty well done. The only thing I had an issue with, I think it, yeah, there were some plot points that don't make a lot of sense, but I think it's lacking the little bit of the humor from the first batch of films. Uh, what I did appreciate about it is that it was pretty brutal in spots. I mean, the whole wood chipper scene was awesome, right? Um, I like the fact that they left the identity of the Santa killer hidden until the end. But with you guys, I totally agree what you said. It's like, it's it only works is if when the reveal happens you're like oh it was that person but when they made the reveal you're like i don't know who that person is <laughs> exactly they, they never talked about who that person was right yeah. uh, which i think is ridiculous but um you know many here's one thing that, I, that uh, this film really worked for me they introduced these little side characters that you ultimately within seconds absolutely hate like how about this teenage girl in the scene where she's screaming at the mom to take her to the mall to go buy whatever it is she wanted to buy and the mother's like oh no i thought we'd go do this tonight she goes get your keys and get in the car we're going to do this and i'm like who talks to their mother like that she needs to be killed immediately and then boom, that's why they did it so that, that pill goes down a lot easier exactly. when you die. And the slimy priest, right? After the, after the first scene he's in, you're like, oh, yeah. this guy is awful, right? He needs to be killed immediately. A couple scenes later, boom, he's gone. So I think it works. I think the movie flows pretty well. Uh, you know, they set it up for a sequel, which, you know, this is over a decade now. I don't think we're going to get. Would have been cool if they did one because they totally left it open for that. So otherwise... Uh, I enjoyed this film. I thought it was pretty good. I had no expectations. I, I immediately thought this was going to be my least favorite, um, but I kind of liked it. Uh, I, would, I almost wanted to rank it higher. Uh, number four for me, I'm going to go with Silent Night, Deadly Night 5, The Toy Maker. Again, four and five really have nothing to do with the whole rest of the series, but I enjoy them as standalone films. Uh, Mickey Rooney, um, yeah, just bizarre uh really weird you know he plays the old toy guy and then you know he starts as the movie goes along you start to find out that he's really kind of like the one who's kind of spearheading all the bad shit that's going on in this uh the, the character of his son who's kind of like a robot it's just really weird like a toy uh i think it's weird it's fun the effects are pretty good it doesn't make a whole hell of a lot of sense and it probably doesn't belong in this series but i still find it kind of fun so that's my number four back to david Okay, okay. Um, so my number three will be number three, um, which has been lower on, on most lists. Um, but I took a few things that I really like from it. First of all, it's got a really great director, Monty Hellman, who did um, Riding the Whirlwind and the shooting with Jack Nicholson in the 60s. Uh, um, he did Two Lane Blacktop. And he loved this movie. He was genuinely proud of this film. And it's got a real David Lynch cast as well. It's got... Um, What's her face from Mulholland Drive? It's got Richard Bamer from Twin Peaks as the doctor. The brother in it is Leo from Twin Peaks. Um, so it's it's got a lot of um lynching connections, then the whole thing's about dreams. Um, so it's it's um or dream connections. Um I like adding the sci-fi element into it, it's giving it something new at least. Um, because you're getting a more kind of Frankenstein's creation there. And it's really leaning into the Frankenstein stuff when uh, Bill Mosley breaks out, and then we get pretty much the scene with the blind man from um, from Bride of Frankenstein, don't we? Where uh, grandmother's really nice to him, and oops, not what you want to do, Granny. Um, but what I like about it is it plays every scene as far as that scene can go. So this is it's not just a Granny; it's the kindliest, sweetest old Granny ever. 
he's not just an 80s yuppie doctor, he's the most slimy 80s yuppie doctor. So everybody's the most version of themselves. It's a it's a very 80s film in that regard. Um, it, it doesn't hold... Robert Culp is just Robert Culp, though. I mean, it's, it plays exactly like it always put Sometimes that works. Sometimes it's, it's this where you think, it was fine, but the plot, if he wasn't in this movie at all, everything would have happened exactly the same as it would have. He'd have changed anything with the plot. So it's a real it's a real example of that character's just there so they can put a name on the poster. And how many kids were going to see Robert Culp movies in 1989? You know, I want to see the new Robert Culp, mummy. Um, and and um, and just pad it out a little bit by having the kind of cop element of it. Um, but I think what was there, there's some some good B movie stuff. Um, but number two for me then, I'm going to go with the original Silent Night, Deadly Night. Um, which I Wait think. Look on Jamie's face. <laughs> well, nobody you, else has had number two, Jamie. So you like the one that does the flashback? My, my on not, it more right, than right, the right, right, right. How often? The... Ha, hang on, hang on. <laughs> How often? <laughs> he's got a long walk ahead of him. He's, How often do we say? He's right, seen enough. Laszlo's seen enough. Well, nobody else had number two at the bottom, did they? So you know, <laughs> fun to be in the minority. I'm going to review these at the same time, then we'll have to wait. Right? How often do we say <laughs> this film works a lot better if you take out all the crap? How often do we say that? Silent Night, Deadly Night Part Two gives you all the best parts of Silent Night, Deadly Night Part One. And another half hour on top of that. So you, you get all of that. You get all the kills. You get all the violence. You get all the sex. You get all the nudity. You get all the nudity. You get absolute everything. And then you get this ridiculously over the top, wonderful new stuff with Eric Freeman playing Ricky, who is playing it to the hilt. Pete, you've already referenced that uh, you said it would be like trying to follow up Boris Karloff. So you've just compared him to Boris bloody Karloff, for goodness <laughs> sake. Nobody can, can nobody can play Ricky, but this Eric Freeman guy is so over the top and wonderful in a B-movie way. Um, before there was, um, you're tearing me apart, Lisa. Before the room, <laughs> there was Garbage Day. Everybody garbage used day, to quote, man, come on. Everybody used to quote Garbage Day, didn't they? It's not really a thing now, but everybody used to quote Garbage Day. So Silent Night, Deadly Night Part 2 would be my number one because you don't need to sit through the more boring parts of, of number one to get all the good bits. So you, you can skip a lot of the stuff that's just nuns sitting around having conversations, and then you can add in the good stuff that's been added to this. Like the ridiculous part where he's trying to get his mother's attention to say the sinister nuns are coming and they jump into the shop and she doesn't see them and blah, blah, blah. And um, the, the gun spree at the end, him running over the uh, the sinister boyfriend, the rapey boyfriend in the car and then going back and forward, back and forward and crushing the guy and the girlfriend going, thank you for, for murdering a guy for her. For... <laughs> it's ridiculous. 15 it's... minutes of the 30 minutes of new stuff is him sitting talking to the doctor. You keep, saying, you keep saying 30 minutes, it's 40 it's, minutes, it's, right? And it's only an hour and a half movie, right? It's only an hour and a half movie. Is there a minute of it that's wasted? Is there a minute of it that's wasted? Now remember, fucking you, you would be watching this as a standalone movie. You wouldn't be watching this as two movies. People bitch about the Friday 13th movies when they do a recap for the first five minutes. But it's okay when they do a recap for the whole fucking movie, I guess. I don't know. Again, you get all the best. You get all the best of this. And this. All the best. So it makes this much more obsolete. You can just it's watch the this. Friends episode where they were lazy and it's a flashback episode. Nobody likes no, those episodes. There's a reason why this is this is such a cult classic. Why it's in the box set. Why people love Garbage Day. Because it gives you everything you love from the original. And then fills it down and adds on such a great addition to it with Eric Freeman and that B-plot, which again, there's not enough time to give you filler in it. So it's all killer, no filler whatsoever. None uh, I whatsoever. I fast forward through all the... Uh, it is lean. It is I, watched, I watched the movie in about 40 minutes. You love TV shows? This this is basically two episodes of TV show that are crammed together, which which is okay. great. It's, it's, it's fills it down, brings you the, the two episode plot. All in one, which great stuff. After this great one, stuff. we'll we'll be talking about Oppenheimer. Me and Daisy and our <laughs> different views on it. Oppenheimer. Jamie doesn't like good movies, folks. <laughs> I don't like good bad movies, and I don't like good good movies, according to you. Well, you, you buy them just because they're going at a print, apparently. You just buy them. Peter asked me at the Christmas get together, he goes, Have you seen Oppenheimer yet? I says, actually, after Jamie's scathing reviews, I'm actually afraid to watch it. <laughs> <laughs> 
I got I got sucked in again. It sucked me back. <laughs> Brilliant film. That's another. That's another talk. That's Let's another go. story Who's for next? another day, right? <laughs> yeah, Silent Night, Deadly Night Part Two, number one, because it's two two many really good movies instead of one half decent movie with forty minutes of filler. All right, Craig. All right, my part of uh, yeah, <laughs> my number three. I went with the original part one. Uh, yeah, and uh, Billy is scared of Santa because of fucking grandpa. <laughs> You know, I mean, the guy's silent for what it's supposed to be twenty years or something. Grandpa never talks, and then he just pulls over. You know, poor little Billy. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it. I think this this was the only one that I had seen previously, and so I did remember par uh, parts of this when I was rewatching this. But uh, Billy traumatized from the a robber Santa killing his parents. The mom was uh, in Cannonball Run, so that's how I I recognized her. Um, once he once he grows up, he goes to work at a toy store. They uh, I mentioned this to Chris uh, before too. They had some uh, background where you could see some of the toys. Uh, they had some nice. It was cool to yeah, see some vintage, place in, eighty three Return toy, of the Jedi stuff, vintage yeah. uh, Return of the Jedi toys yep. and some things Job like the that. Where, that it was recognizable to see some see some things uh, from from our childhood. So that was that was at least kind of cool. Um, but. Yeah, I mean, once he goes nuts after the uh, after the toy store owner forces him to dress as Santa Claus, I mean, it was uh, that was at least kind of uh, you you. It was one of those. Well, I could I could see that one coming, but the uh, those poor kids at the orphanage they they're going to be traumatized uh, for life because they get to see Santa killed not once but twice. And you know, one one of course was they humorously said, well, it it was he was. A deaf, a deaf guy. He couldn't hear the cops say, you know, "Turn around." So I mean, it was un unintentionally funny, at least with that. But uh, but yeah, reasonably entertaining enough. But yeah, there there was some dull parts in it, and it was one of those where I think you kind of look back and it's like, "Geez, what what was such a big? Why was this such a controversy back then?" I mean, there were things that were much worse. Maybe it was just just because of the whole idea of Santa Santa Claus, even though movies like christmas evil and to all a good night or you know predate this movie so but uh anyhow that was part one is my was my number three my number two i actually quite liked uh i i went with part four uh initiation or the bugs and um i i just i for i, I found it pretty entertaining even though yeah it it really doesn't have much to do with uh christmas and the yeah you kind of throw a tree in in at a few parts in it but i i found myself kind of engaged with this and and it, it was one of those that for me at least it seemed like a try harder movie after part three that you could see that with the direction and the way that some things were filmed and the the hate the dreamlike quality that the main character was having in in some parts like where she wakes up in the woods and looks up at the looks up at the tree branches and, and it makes a face i mean uh, you know i mean I, it, it was kind of they it was direct to video but it seemed like they were putting it forth some sort of an effort to try and make uh, uh make the best movie that they could with this and uh, the the main character in the movie uh, i believe uh, her name uh character's name was kim uh wow she goes through the ringer in this i mean she's drugged have a has a worm put in her has a rat cut on her worm goop on her face and raped by clint howard you know shirtless clint howard i mean this whatever salary this this woman got she earned it uh for doing part four uh you know in this uh for this one and the the killing of the boyfriend was actually pretty gruesome at least i thought you know uh, they they definitely amped up some of the gore compared to some, to some of the things that happened in the prior movies in that and the uh, yeah, her coworker Alice Beasley. From she was in Moonlighting. As soon as I, as soon as I saw her, it's like, oh yeah, I remember remember her from that. But I found but I found this one you know reasonably reasonably entertaining, and I I I I did like it, even though yeah, it's it's a stretch to call it a Christmas movie, but yeah, number one is number two. I I I I really it is it is <laughs> it was. You know, I, you know, I I thought the same thing at first. You know, I'm watching this and it's like, Jesus, how much how much of a recap are we doing with this? But then, as Davy said, you know, you're really only showing the good stuff from this. And to kind of like say what Chris had mentioned, uh, you know, some time ago, 
there's a pretty good gap between parts one and two. And so, you know, and part, it's not like part one was a huge hit like uh, Friday the 13th. So, you know, yeah, you could maybe have a little bit of, of a recap in there to refresh people's memory to, you know, to see what's going on. But all this, all the scenes in between the flashbacks with Ricky are just fucking gold. I mean, yeah. just with all of his, uh, you know, his mannerisms. And once, once he starts going on a rampage, holy shit, that is, that is <laughs> some fine cinema. I mean, besides the garbage day, all, all of the, <laughs> you know, every, every time he would, every time he would bump somebody off. I mean, it was just, it was just so great. I mean, the, uh, and this, the meta, the meta scene in the theater, hilarious you know that you know to, to me wa watching that and uh just this would be one of those movies and uh i mentioned it to to chris and maybe to pete uh that exhumed has not run any of these movies uh at a marathon and this would i think be a hoot to to watch yeah. with a, with a crowd and uh that everyone would just be laughing and enjoying themselves at all the scenes yeah all the good the good stuff from part one complete with all the absolute gold uh that is thrown in for for the second movie uh for you know for the the new scenes with the psychiatrist and and just when he go takes the cop's gun and goes on goes on the rampage i mean it, i mean i was sitting there watching it going <laughs> you know but it was, but you know i i couldn't help but enjoy uh but enjoy this one uh part part two is my number one. I hate you all. <laughs> I hate every single one of you. Ah, uh, Chris, what you Jimmy's got? now worried there's a group chat <laughs> going on to do this as a conspiracy of something. <laughs> They're out to get um, the world. All right, my, my number three, I, I wanted to like it more, um, but it was okay, was the remake from 2012. Um, I really liked that they upped the gore. And I really liked that they upped the nudity. Um, but you're right, Pete, it was it was totally humorless, although there was a couple times uh, it was, you know, I, I laughed when I wasn't supposed to. Um, but I did really like that they killed a kid in it. I mean, we've all seen how many dozens upon dozens of slashers, including all the Friday the 13th. And no, we, no child is ever killed. Of course, you know, the kid was an asshole, like, like Pete mentioned earlier. But still, I thought that was pretty unique. Um, I don't like Donald Logue. Uh, I dated this girl like 20 years ago and she loved him and she made me watch all these shitty movies and TV shows with him and I had to pretend I liked him. And I, I fucking, I, yeah, so I didn't like that. Um, but just some stuff was just mind bogglingly stupid. Like there was, a, it was like they wrote the first draft and they were like, fuck it, film it. Like, okay, so there's a parade in Wisconsin on Christmas Eve after dark when it's got to be what like 10 fucking degrees i'm like this yeah. makes no sense the mayor has two kids a, like a seven-year-old and like a hot 18 year old and in the same scene he turns to the little girl and he's like okay little susie it's time to go to bed and then the hot 18 year old shows up with the boyfriend and she's like hey dad we're gonna go bang in the guest house and he's like but wait what do you mean? We were all going to go to the parade together as a family. And I'm like, this is the same scene. I'm like, well, which is it? Are you all going as a family to the fucking parade? Because you just sent the little girl to go to bed. So to me, that's this whole movie. It just, shit just doesn't make sense. So I, I want them to like it higher. And Christmas, and number Christmas, two, Eve, and Christmas Eve, they're, they're, nobody's at the fucking church. Yes. Great point, Craig. <laughs> the, I, I had mentioned that to nobody's Craig the other day. Service? Christmas, Christmas Eve, Eve, like the fucking holiest night of the year and there's three people in the church the sleazy priest the killer and some old lady and that's it nobody else i'm like oh for for fuck's sake that that's why i like the, the logic in this i'm like this had to be one draft and that was it but yeah ex excellent point part two is my part two although i gotta be honest man davy makes a fucking amazing point I, I think I need to rewatch him because I might need to switch him because part two is awesome. Sorry, Jamie. I mean, the the footage that there, that Eric Freeman, those are the fucking greatest eyebrows in the history of cinema. 
I mean, that, there is that there is nobody that's a greater over actor than this oh, guy. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> and please, sweet Christmas, somebody get this guy on the convention circuit to do fucking autographs. And I hope he still got them big bushy eyebrows. He's, um, he's but, done man, like nothing was, else, right? I mean, he's done nothing uh, else. I, I don't. Yeah, I don't believe so. Anything, but I mean, yeah. you know, there was a, there was, and I don't even know what what the cool kids call it now. I don't know if it's a meme or whatever. But there was a thing going around years ago, and it was a quick clip, and it was just him doing the fucking eyebrow thing. I mean, it's nuts. <laughs> uh, and and the garbage day bit when he is walking down the street and just blowing people away, it's 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 fucking hysterical. And and I I wanted to pull a Dan, but I I didn't have it in me, Dan. You are you are a far better movie watcher than I am. <laughs> but between the flashbacks from part one and the new footage from part two, I'm like, holy fuck, are there five or six actors playing the one character Ricky throughout the movie? Which again I thought was fucking awesome. I'm like, this is amazing. I'm like, you know, if it wasn't for this guy's eyebrows, it would be tough to figure out. Wait, wh- which one's Ricky? But um but I, I did really like it. And yeah, my, the first one, but I, I might have to change my mind. Part one, uh, which is just fun and funny. Um, to Craig's point, you know, I always liked it. And then like 20 years ago, I saw it in a, uh, in a double feature. Uh, and it was Black Christmas and Silent Night, Deadly Night, part one. And man, the fucking audience laughed their asses off. So soon after, and there was only, as far as I know, because it's, it's on one of the running commentaries <clears throat> there was 17 prints in america for silent night deadly night I, I bought one of them and i ran it at my hudson horror show i don't i don't know if dan if you were at that one but man it is it is so incredibly funny uh in front of an audience it's 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 uh, it's unbelievable uh and yeah i think my favorite part of the whole franchise is grandpa when he's like Christmas Eve is the scariest night of the whole damn year. I'm like, I want an action figure of grandpa in a wheelchair. I want a t-shirt of fucking grandpa. I mean, I, I and the other thing that always boggles my mind, I'm like, wait a second. I'm like, so you did this whole franchise, right? I'm not counting the fucking remake. But I'm like, so you did five movies. Everything is is related to the fact that Ricky and Billy were orphaned because some dude killed their parents. How is there not a movie in the franchise where either Ricky or Billy go to hunt down the dude that killed their parents? I'm like, it's fucking, it's right there. It's right there. Or the backstory of the guy or why, how he became this criminal. Something. Something. So, you know, I always. Nothing about this dude. Right. But there's got to be a, you know, listen, it's movie, movie magic. The comic even, book even horror. Bruce Wayne went to go find out who killed his parents, right? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, so I, I'm like, they're making movies about fucking bugs and old lesbian witches, but <laughs> they couldn't figure out a fucking movie to have Ricky or Billy go back and be like, you kill, you got, oh, I got to kill a whole bunch of Santas because that's the only way I'm going to make sure I kill that one Santa that knocked off my mom and dad. I don't know how they, nobody thought of that, but. And anyway, they that's my. The, they tried to do the grandpa thing in the in the reboot. In the remake, it was yeah. Sick. Of all the things to homage, why do grandpa? To, uh, they yeah. only did two they things. Did. They did person getting lifted onto the the deer antlers and grandpa. And just... wait, David, they did one more when one of the cops they go, "Hey, Officer Pardo, don't forget take out the garbage." So he walks out with a with a bag of garbage and he goes, mm. "Garbage day." Yeah, and I was yeah. like, oh. <laughs> hey, but Chris, Bugs and Old Lesbians is probably my favorite prog rock album of all time. Yeah. <laughs> that sounds amazing. Book, Bugs and Old Lesbians. Bugs and Old Lesbians. <laughs> you know, you do have to mention, someone's got to mention her, Linnea Quigley, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, that's, that's, that's. She had to show up at some point, didn't yeah, she? Yeah, she's and... on the shirt with the antlers through her boobs. Oh, she. Yeah. Doesn't she go to answer the door that like with off. she they goes to answer the door with like no top? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think that's how she just turns up on set. To be honest, she she knows exactly why she's hired. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh for sure. <laughs> I was going to say she's very upfront about it, but yeah, uh, yes. Uh, <laughs> all right, Dan, your top three. 
Oh boy, here we go. Let's see, I can't remember where I even left off at one point. Oh, so all right, number three is going to be the reboot. Uh, and the thing about the reboot, everyone's pretty much hit it. Personally, I think the reboot, the opening sequence with Santa getting himself prepared, there's the girl tied on the bed, he goes into the basement. I mean, the lighting, it's really well set up. The guy sitting in the chair, the water, it's its a its a wet floor. You're saying, wow. And of course, they're taking a liberty. They're turning around and they're not showing the kid watching his parents being killed by, by Santa. I thought that first part is great. The end part, if you go to the last segment, which is going to be the, you know, not giving too much away, police station with the smoke and the red lights and the green lights and the, you know, the killer in the place. And then the reveal at the end, that's actually pretty well put together because you go, oh, wow, that's what's going on. This was, you know, whatever the, that's who the Santa was. But it's everything in between that just goes, what? You know, uh, it just makes no sense. You know, there's there's a lot of plot holes. Um, yeah, the, sle the sleazy priest. It's like, Jesus Christ, man. I mean, God, it's kind of like, come on, ladies, closer together. Closer. And this whole thing with the Christmas parade, is this like the the hallmark Christmas village of hot women. Everybody is like a runway model running around these little scanty outfits. And they're waving, as like Chris said before, it's like 10 below. And they're out there just ah, waving away and, and all this. Stuff. It just makes no sense. But yeah, the beginning and the end of that film, that two segments together are just greatly done. They're just well done. It's way above the production values of the middle of the film. So yeah. that being said, the next one, and I could get on... I'll be closing, cl moving closer to Jamie's hate hit list. Uh, I have to go with number one as my number two choice. And only because it just, it's a basic, straightforward you know, slasher. I mean, no worse than Friday the 13th. No less blood, no more blood. A lot of controversy. Makes me think that possibly they had this thing pulled purposely. Like, kind of like the interview with Seth Rogen and Jane, just to drum up interest and curiosity curiosity to so and then when he made you know the next one that that's it but number one can't everybody's covered it my favorite number two okay uh in the world of slithis slithis oration and the in the dialogue from that to ricky who i said earlier looks kind of like a jimmy fallon's older brother who did time and he also i'm expecting after every line to be like that guy on liberty mutual going bibbity boop I swear, it's just, you know, it's just, it's so bad. Every line he delivers is like some Othello and, you know, soliloquy from Hamlet. And it's so bad. And like some of the words, like the girlfriend, right? Yeah, it's so bad. Oh, yeah, but it's so bad. It's amusing. That's the fun part about it. Yeah, this is the most fun with this film. And it's true. It's like the Evelyn Wood speed reading version. You could watch both one and two in the one film. And I personally think he took that 30 minutes of footage, if in fact they had you know, banned his film or pulled it and had all this stuff. I think he purposely put the 30 minutes back in the beginning. Part of the rationale behind it was like a big F you. Okay. It's not that controversial, uh, but also he didn't have the budget. Same as I think they got Mickey Rooney in on number five, not telling him it's Silent Night, Deadly Night. It was probably called The Toy Maker or something like this. He made the movie and then, whoops, by the way, it's not called Night of the, you know, it's not called Anubis like Night of the Living Dead. It's Night of the Living Dead. So they caught him on that. But number two is just so absurd. The dialogue, I mean, shh, naughty. Like I said, the girl that literally yells, go, uh-oh. And all he says, he goes, punish. Like, <laughs> He goes, uh oh, and she runs like like a cartoon character, like in a Tex Avery cartoon, you know, just so bad. And the best part about number two, and I, I think I discussed this with Craig at the Christmas party. I sat there and said, you know, in the first movie, as you're watching it, when at one point in time the police show up at the uh, orphanage. And there's a guy in a Santa costume walking towards all the kids and they get out and, and they're yelling at him and they just decide to shoot him in the back. <laughs> now, in that film, he was like Father O'Reilly or Father Dunham or something like this. By the time the second film comes comes around, he's referred to as like Olaf the alcohol or oh, like God, the janitor. janitor or something. <laughs> I'm going like, wow, what was this guy? Was this guy the alcoholic janitor that would like put a priest frock on and hang out in the boys' locker room? What, what is this guy's story? And the and number two, the best part about number two, which I was rolling on the floor with, 
is when they're at the toy store and the one girl comes in and says, look, or I think it was the, the, the sister. She comes in and says, look, I need to get a job for one of my guys, Ricky, and coming in. And this guy is like, no way. I'm not hiring anybody else. Blah, blah, blah. Blah. And all of a sudden, Ricky comes in being like the Sears underwear model that he looks like at this point. And the guy basically sits there and goes, well, hello, sailor. <laughs> Just, you know, I think in all honesty, the most exciting story in this whole thing would have been a movie about the, how would I say, the closeted homosexual alcohol <laughs> owner of the toy store. Who, you know, <laughs> who hates Christmas. It's like this is classic. This is this is charming shit here. This is like Charles Dickens type shit, you know. And I swear to God, but it was that's why I loved it because it was just you can't take it seriously, and I didn't take any of them seriously. This one here, the more I watched, I said, God, I love this movie, you know. And then I went went back and watched Slithers and realized Slithers is actually like a Martin Scorsese film. So, <laughs> so that's it. Number two is number one. All right. <laughs> oh, all right jamie number two is a big pile of number two <laughs> all right uh i'm going next with silent night deadly night five the toy maker i actually rented this in 1991 because i i saw so i went into this seeing one two and five uh, i was like mickey rooney i gotta see this so i rented it brought it home and i remember hating it but then watching it a second time this past week it's not as bad as I remember. Um, I do love how the kid loses his dad and the mom is over it in two weeks. She's like completely over it. She's like, this ain't going to ruin my Christmas. <laughs> and, and then she's banging some dude in a, in a parking garage in the back of his car. And didn't your husband just die? <laughs> um, so yeah, nothing makes sense in these movies. The redhead being the neighbor doesn't make sense. I don't know why. Uh, I did notice that the kid in this movie is watching part four on yep. the TV. Mm -hmm. And what it, part he's watching is where Clint Howard's watching part three. Oh. So it's kind of meta within meta there. Well, the girl also uh, asked a, for, um, she wants Brady to reanimate her for Christmas from Santa, which is Brian using his film before it. That's right. Yeah. Uh, I do think it's a decent idea. I think it has it, it tries to have a nice little twist at the end. The the part where the puppet's trying to bang the mom and thrusting and saying, I love you, mommy, as he's trying to bang her is something that will stay with me for a while. Uh, but I, it's not as bad as I remember, but I don't think it's as good as it think thinks it is or is trying to be. But it's not terrible. It's all right. Um, I'm going with the remake as my number two. You guys are saying it doesn't make sense. None of these fucking movies make sense. There's plot holes throughout all these movies. I don't know why you're pointing them out more on this one. Maybe because it looks more slick and you expect more from it. Oh, because it's how done it, really. Um, it, I mean, it, 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 uh, the first thing I thought of was Malcolm McDowell is, uh, he's not miscast as a small town sheriff. I'm like, if that's my first you know, bad thing I'm going to say about this movie, then it must not be too terrible. It's brutal. Yes, you get the 14-year-old girl that dies, but they make sure you hate her first so that pill goes down a little easier. You get to see a guy's head sliced in half, the topless girl going into the wood chipper. Her acting makes that even worse because you really think it's going on the way she's acting. The effects are good. There's a slickness to it that they're really trying to, they're really trying to make it look slick. Maybe trying too hard but that's okay it turns into a bit of a mystery and i got a little involved with the mystery even though the payoff isn't that great uh the lead chick cop does a good performance and uh i thought the asian chick was adorable in it so it's my number two and i'm going with the original at number one uh the open you know i rewatched this two years ago and billy's sitting in the uh back seat of the car going through a book and he's going through this book. And I remember seeing him go through. I was like, oh, my God, I had that as a kid. I paused the movie two years ago, went on eBay and bought this <laughs> for like eight bucks or something. I was like, oh, there's my childhood. So, yes, the grandpa scene is great. But I made this note while watching the movie. So since I made the note, I'm going to read it. 
Old men looked different in 1984. They all looked like they belonged on an episode of Highway to Heaven. I don't know. It seemed important at the at the time. Uh, but the setup throughout the 80s isn't bad. I I feel like I'm watching like a real movie, quote unquote. I'm getting caught up with the characters, what's going on. Uh, and then once he starts going nuts, it just becomes a pr pretty good solid slasher movie with a lot of TNA. Uh, I do have the unrated version, as you guys might have seen, too. The bonus film that they put in that's more violent, it's really off-putting and jarring because it looks like stock footage. You're looking at, like, clean film, and then all of a sudden it's all messy and dirty looking, and it's taking me out of it. Even though you're getting more gore, I wish it kind of wasn't there because it just feels like stock footage, you know. And even with that, it was... Uh, an hour and 24 minutes so it doesn't outstay its welcome and the beheading on the sled is a classic oh yeah yeah cool all right cap us off here uh number three i'm gonna go with silent night deadly night four so while i was why i think craig and i were like watching this at the exact same time in our own separate homes and we were texting each other saying oh this is kind of fun actually um yeah i mean it has absolutely zero fucks to do with any of the other films uh, it's a Silent Night, Deadly Night film in name only. But that being said, it's directed by Brian Usna, who we all love, and his stamp is all over this, I think, like Dan mentioned. And I love the practical gore effects. Love them. I love the body horror stuff. Um, there's loads of humor in this. It makes no sense whatsoever, but as a standalone film, it's it was so enjoyable to me that I had to rank it up pretty high. And I think, you know... This this one's got a lot of shit from a lot of fans over the years, but I think uh, the way I perceive it is like I kind of compare it to like Halloween three, season of the witch, which at the time we all hated because we're like ah, there's no Michael Myers here. This has nothing to do with the first two movies. Bah, this sucks. All these you know what's this all about? Season of the witch and all this shit. And I think that this film kind of has some stuff in, that's similar. Uh, in tone and the way they just kind of go for something completely different here it's the oddity by far in the series but i think it's not as bad as maybe it's been perceived all these years i had a lot of fun with it clint howard is just off the rails hilarious in this film uh, i like the lead chick the redhead i think she's really good um you got maude adams i don't know I, I i really enjoyed this i thought this was good it was totally different shouldn't be a silent night deadly night film but it's still a lot of fun that's what makes it different from halloween 3 because at least halloween 3 feels like a halloween film if not michael yeah, myers there's film. no there's no this doesn't feel like a christmas film yeah, and they, they could have done some some minor things to make it feel that, but they didn't. I don't know yeah. why. My guess is they probably already shot and finished this film. It was a script that was rewritten or something. And yeah. they said, let's just make it a Silent Night Deadly film because it'll yeah. probably do better, right? Yeah. Yep. So, number two, I'm going to go with uh, part two. Um, for all the reasons you guys said, uh, you know, I remember the first time I saw this film, I bought like a, a DVD two-pack with the first two films on it. And I remember why, you know, I always really liked the first one spoiler alert uh but the second one i always thought was like ah god there's all this unused footage i mean oh, there's all this previous footage from the first film and there's really not that much here but i'm re-watching it again recently to get ready to do this i laughed my ass off at like the last 40 minutes of this film i had it's so much so fun funny with this. Yeah. this guy eric freeman how he never did anything else is beyond me granted I agree, I agree with jamie he's the worst actor we've ever seen but he puts his all into this role and he takes this character and he just goes so over the top with it. You can't not unglue your eyes from this dude every time he's on the screen. The stupid facial expressions, the eyebrows, every time he opens his mouth and says something, it's just absolutely hilarious. And it, it's almost funny because it almost like sucks that like the first 45 minutes is all footage from the first film you have to wonder if they really had a full original idea for this film and this guy like literally did this for most of the film because you know he's there's all those scenes where they're in the uh the shrink house and he's talking to his his uh, doctor and whatnot could you imagine if they kind of like there was very little previously viewed footage and like you got like an hour of him right going berserk in the asylum yeah this is the greatest oh, film that would be ever. amazing yeah yeah but uh you know, and, and he's just perfect in the role. He's so he's big, he's intimidating, he's psychotic, the facial expressions, you know, garbage day, the it's just so much fun. Uh, you know, 
Mother Superior getting killed, I think, is great, too. We haven't mentioned her at all. She's a big part of these first two films. But, yeah, lo loads and loads of fun. My appreciation for this film went up big time. I, I totally expected when we were going to do this this ranking that this would have been the bottom for me. And after rewatching it again, I'm like, this film is great. What have I been thinking all these years? So, anyway, could have been even better, though. Uh, number one, got to go with the first one. I mean, it's a basic slasher story, but I think it works. The kills are great. Uh, I think the, the guy who plays Billy is good. Uh, he's not quite as entertaining as the guy who plays his brother. But, um, you know, every time he says naughty, it's great. Uh, there's great nudity. Just It's just loads of fun. Um, and I think it sets itself up perfectly for the sequel, which is good. But, yeah, it's uh, the, the first two, for me, are mandatory. He, he doesn't say naughty in the first one, does he? He says something else. <laughs> He says naughty late in the film. He says like, naughty. No, the, naughty. the brother says naughty in the second one. He, what, what is it? It says in the first one. But I thought that was his line. Oh, uh, punish? I think it's naughty. Was it punish? Punish. It's naughty? punish. It's because oh, it's the punish. 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 Well, punish. They use it in the second film, too. It's Ricky that says oh. naughty. But I thought he says naughty late in the film. His brother does. does. His brother does. At the, at the yeah. At the, he at the closer when you realize he's at the end, become, at the, You're right, he's younger, but when he's, yeah, you're right. You're right. right little, anyway, right, little Ricky someone says, says naughty in it, yeah. Because yeah. that surprised me as well, because I was thinking, oh, wait, this is the bit where he says, oh, wait, it doesn't say that in this movie? What? 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 <laughs> Which shows you how much number two is permutated pop culture, I guess. I know. At number two, Jamie, I don't know. You know, that, that, that that one. One. They, they were when they first were going to put it on DVD. I think they tried to find. They couldn't find him, and then he did surface. I guess when they remastered it, uh, was it on screen. He, he is on this. Yes, he, he does a commentary on that. Correct, David. Um, he, he does an audio commentary and an interview. Yeah. Wow. Well, if, if I'm not mistaken, Dan, you, you're right. Um, the he didn't the actor the original actor for whatever reason. I guess I don't know if he was embarrassed or just. I don't know if he was, maybe he found God, I don't know, but then he started to surface and he, he's done fan conventions done and he even before. started doing fan conventions in the Santa outfit. Wow. So I think they got to get the both Billy and Ricky. So the big brother from the first film you're talking about, right? Yes. Yeah, Billy. So that, you know, for, yeah, Billy from the first one, he, he didn't want to have anything to do with the movie, but hey, you know, I guess somebody got in his ear and go, listen, man, you can make a couple bucks with this. A lot so of them. first he did conventions and then he started doing it in a Santa suit. Yeah. Ask Clint and then there's there's it. action figures of both Ricky and Billy. Yeah. Yeah. So. I will say uh, you know, we've done a lot of film rankings in recent months. Uh seeing as I hadn't seen four of these six films, I was kind of like going into this one. I'm like, oh God, this is gonna be a slog. I had more fun with this series than I had with uh, a lot of than the Phantasm series. Proof? Yeah. Can't, can't quite I mean, this isn't high art we're here. We're talking about. No, no, no. It but was fun. lots of fun. But yeah, there are lots of fun. This, um, and I'm assuming it's on the American Scream Factory one as well, also has a new thing called Ricky Today. And it's, an, it's a, a new short film of um, Eric Freeman reprising the role in 2017. No. As, yeah. as though he was doing another interrogation with a it's psychiatrist. So, yeah, know. I'm ordering that tonight. <laughs> yeah, so so you get basically you a short mine. film of him reprising the role, doing wow. another interrogation scene. Yeah. Listen, I, I want I want a Ricky and Billy team up movie where they do go around killing Santas, trying to find the Santa that killed their their parents. Uh, that's that's that should be part six. They're all old, but they're still crazy, right? Yeah, at a Santa con at a VFW. Yes, <laughs> like Dan. <laughs> Now you're thinking. Yeah. If Sam and I Cop can have a sequel bringing back the originals 30 yes. years later, why not this? You know, 100%. If you've got any film producers watching, there's your idea for a That's it. Yeah. Go. Green light and quick. Not Malcolm McDowell. Not fucking Jamie King. Bring back fucking yeah. Eric Freeman. That's what the kids want. There you go. <laughs> there you have it everybody uh ranking the silent night deadly night film series rank them as you like them down in the comments below and uh please from all of us do have a wonderful uh christmas season whether you uh you know participate in christmas or hanukkah or whatever it might be enjoy the holidays everybody uh from all of us here at the monsters den we hope you uh have a great time and we'll see you real soon here with more stuff visit us on the web with www no visit us on the web at www.seatranquility.org we're on facebook we're on youtube all together all the damn all the time, time. time.
Happy holidays. That's right. We, we're going to have some bonus episodes coming up. So uh, don't touch that dial for Dan Brown, Chris Allo, Davey Gallagher, Craig Kaminsky, and the guy who put the second film at the bottom, Jamie Laszlo. I am Pete Pardo. Naughty. See you soon Don't here from Monsters Punish. and Punish. <laughs> Punish. Naughty. <laughs> Garbage day. See ya. Garbage day.